guys, chances are if you're watching this video, you're a ceramic studio or craft center or a maker space that wants to offer emulsion style screen printing to its members. So I'm here to review with you three options for light kits to offer members in your studios. I'm going to go through the features and benefits of each one and the space requirements for each. People have decided that the previous methods that they've offered their clients of freezer paper, um, cutting vinyl stickers, cutting cardboard. These are extremely time consuming and they really have horrible results. So emulsion style screen printing has become really popular, especially in um, ceramics and polymer clay and glass works and wood works. These artist guilds are just loving the portability of a small dog screen printing stencil and the ability to achieve extremely detailed stencils um, without any of the laborious cutting of vinyl stickers, etc. So a screen stencil can be made in 30 minutes or less, so that's incredible. binders can be whatever width you'd like, the three ring binder. This is like a three quarter inch binder. You could do an inch or a two inch binder depending on how many stencils you think you might make. But my system is to basically, I come up with artwork that I want to make into a screen stencil and I print it on a transparency and I put it in my little three ring binder. And when I have time, then I make it into a screen stencil. So lots of ideas are in this binder. Some things I have made into a screen stencil and some other things have yet to be made into a screen stencil. But the sheets are eight and a half by 11. Um, and you can make one big screen stencil that takes up the entire page or a series of tiny, smaller screen stencils, smaller screen stencils and I usually just put a little line, and once it's made into a sheet of custom stencils, then I just cut apart the stencil on the little fine lines that divide them. So this was cut, and then these all need to be cut. And then you've got a series of really tiny screen stencils. So these are just some examples of things that I've made over the years. I have one that's a fun binder, and then I have one that's a work binder. And in my work binder, I put in my logo stencils that I use for packaging and other fun projects. So this screen stencil I have in my other um, work binder. You basically just print on your transparency Use the transparency and film under the light source of your choice to make a custom screen stencil. And when it's dry, it feels like paper, and you can pretty much just adhere it to any surface, flat or curved, like this one, and then push various inks through it to personalize items. This is a plastic tote that I'm gonna to talk to you about. Um, I personalized to make it a light kit box. I'm going to go through with you, depending on the square footage you have available to dedicate to your small dog screen printing area, um, that's going to dictate pretty much which of the three light sources you can use. So the very first and least expensive way is just the traditional DIY light kit. It comes with a stand, the shade, a clamp, and two bulbs, the exposure bulb, which is a compact fluorescent light bulb, and then a safe light bulb that you can use and it sets with a different picture to make the area safe to handle film before you expose it. So this is a really good unit to use for a space that you can dedicate to screen printing where you can turn off the lights in that space and there are no 
windows or doors with sunlight flooding in. So basically, if you have a room that you can dedicate, like maybe a photography room that's not really being used, or some other you know, square footage where you can turn off the lights periodically for exposure, then you can use this unit. Even so, um, you know, many, many studios, they just don't have space where they can dedicate an entire room to screen printing. So that's why we have come up with a modifi modified approach that a lot of maker spaces and craft studios use um, to offer custom emulsion style screen printing in their studio, but to not have to dedicate space. So we've come up with a solution for craft studios that can't dedicate a lot of square footage just for screen printing. So basically you create your own really quick, easy DIY um, desktop dark room. And this allows you to keep the studio lights on at all times and still create a dark room space for your emulsion style screen printing. So this is available at Walmart. It's a 20 gallon mainstay uh, black tote. I personalized it later as I showed you before with a stencil and I simply made a custom print stencil with my logo and positioned it on there and added just thickened dip with screen printing ink to my squeegee and personalized it. I let it dry and after it was dry to the touch I used this 2x clear matte seal protector um, Rust-Oleum. It bonds to plastic, metal, wood, and more. So it seals it so it keeps it from chipping. So that's how I personalized my little tote. But to make it a desktop darkroom, all you have to do is turn it over, take your one and a quarter inch drill bit, drill a hole on the very top, Take your clamp light from your DIY light kit and what you're going to want to do is release this socket from your clamp. just the socket. Now this should be able to fit really well right here in the very top. It should, you have to kind of go back and forth and back and forth a little bit until it fits in there really snugly. You don't want any light coming around here, but you want it in there very snugly. all the way up until that top ring. I don't know if you can see that, but you want it pushed in. You have to push it in all the way because when you screw in the bowl on the inside, the CFL exposure bowl will be screwed into here. And the tip of the bowl to the edge of the box should be about 12 inches. So, if the socket doesn't get pushed in all the way, then the tip of the bowl won't sit at the right height to your work surface. But if you push it in, it should be all set to go. Then you simply plug it in, turn on the socket, and voila, you have your desktop darkroom. So this is a great, there's a, an additional video in the frequently asked questions, but it's really a really nice way, not very large um, desktop darkroom, but it is, allows you as a craft center to keep the ambient lights on in the room, but still make emulsion style screen printing. So that's the second way 
Then the very last way, for many artists that do have the capability of turning off the ambient room lights, but they want to make more than just one full page screen stencil at a time. These grow light kits, I got this one at a thousand bulbs. Um, it's by Agrobrite and it actually comes in a lot of different sizes. The one that I got here, and you can see a picture of it on the box. This one is a 24 by, 12, by 13, but it comes in 28 lengths, 46, 48, depending on how many screen stencils you'd like to make. This one comes with under cabinet mounts, where if you had a cabinet, you just screw in little hooks, and then this would hang from your work surface at 12 inches tall. For me, I don't have a cabinet in this room that I can mount hardware to, so I just slid it in on the shelf, and I added a shelf below that was 12 inches from the bowl to the, bowl to the work surface. So this will allow me to expose multiple screens at one time. This method, you can fit probably two full page screen stencils under here, one, two. When it's mounted like this, these brackets get in the way. Um, if I had it without these brackets in the way, because this creates a shadow down here, um, if it was just traditionally mounted underneath the cabinet, I, I bet I could get three stencils across. So just a good tip for artists that want to produce in bulk. But this, there's also a link on my Frequently Asked Question page, and um, there are varying sizes available at 1,000 molds.